Today we're going to expand on the idea of game theory and looking at a more interesting type of problem, which is what is called a non-strictly determined game, which basically means we have no pure strategy. We're going to have to have a strategy that's a blend, where we choose option A some of the time, option B some of the time, option C some of the time. And uh, the way these non-strictly determined games work is if they're only played once, it makes no difference. in the result. However, if they are played repeatedly, you can come up with a mixed strategy of alternating moves. So let's go back to our example with Saul and Joe, and they were playing their penny nickel game. Saul and Joe decided to revise their penny nickel game. Saul realized it was not a good game for him to play. He was losing one cent per game, if you remember from yesterday's video. So they decided to revise it. And the new rules now is if they both show the same coin, then Saul will keep both. If they are different, then Joe keeps both. So again, we'll put Saul as the row player, Joe as the column player. They can choose a penny or a nickel. Penny or a nickel. If they both show penny, the same coin, Saul's going to win that one cent from Joe. However, if Saul shows a penny and Joe shows a nickel, Saul will lose his one cent because they are different. Similarly, if Saul shows a nickel and Joe shows a penny, Saul loses his nickel, so he's down five cents. But if they both show nickel, Saul is up five cents. Now, if we wanted to find the optimal strategy, what we found out is we just had to protect ourselves against the worst case scenario. Well, the row player, the worst case scenario is the lowest number. So in the first row, that would be negative one. and the second row, that would be negative five. The column player wants to protect against the worst case scenario, which is the biggest number. In the first column, that's 1. And in the second column, that's 5. And what you notice is the box and the star do not line up at all. There is no pure strategy that they should both always choose in order to be in the best case scenario. So they're going to need to pick some mixed strategy. So here's the mixed strategy that they decide on. Saul decides to go penny 30% of the time. Joe decides.
to go penny 75% of the time. So what we have is Saul, the row player, is choosing the first option 30% of the time. The other option then must be 70% of the time. So that's his strategy, 30.3.7. Joe, the column strategy, goes penny, the first option, 75% of the time. And nickel, the second option, the rest of the time, which must be 25% of the time. So that is their mixed strategy, not going with one option purely all the time. Well, let's look at what's going to happen then. We'll make a little table here. We've got several moves that are possible. Moves for Saul and moves for Joe. Saul could choose Penny and Joe could choose Penny. Saul could choose Penny and Joe could choose Nickel. Saul could choose Nickel and Joe could choose Penny. And Saul can choose Nickel and Joe could choose Nickel. So if those are the moves that are possible, let's look at the probability that each happens. The probability that Saul chooses nickel, or I'm sorry, Saul chooses penny, the first option. Remember, that's penny, nickel, penny, nickel. Saul's going to choose nickel, a uh, penny, 30% of the time. Joe's choosing penny, 0.75 of the time. And so if we multiply that compound probability together, we get 0 0.2. 25 is the probability that they both choose penny. For nickel, so will choose nickel point I'm sorry, for penny, read my chart right. Saul so chooses penny point 0.3, Joe chooses nickel point 0.25 and so when we multiply there, that result's going to happen point 0.075 of the time. Saul is going to choose nickel, though. Point seven of the time. Joe chooses penny. Point seven five of the time. And when we multiply there, this result is going to happen. Point five two five of the time. Over fifty percent of the time, this result is going to happen. And then they both choose nickel. Point seven for Saul. 0.25 for Joe, and when we multiply those, we get 0.175 of the time. So is this going to be good for Joe, or is this going to be good for Saul? Well, to do that, we need to find the expected value. And if you remember from probability, we multiply the probability by the payoff to calculate the expected value. So the payoff of both doing penny, if I can scroll up so that we can see our little table here at the top there, the payoff of both doing penny is a payoff of 1 for Saul. Penny nickel is negative 1 for Saul. Nickel penny, that's negative 5 for Saul. And nickel nickel, that's positive 5 for Saul. And so when we multiply the probability times the payoffs, 0.225 times 1 is 0 0.225. 0 0.075 times negative 1 is negative 0 0.075. 0 0.525 times negative 5 is negative 2.625. And 0.175 times 5 is positive 0.875. And if you remember with probability, we just add up those expected values to get the total expected value. And if we do this on our calculator, we end up with negative 1.6. 
this expected value is the value of the gain. Which means with both of them adopting this strategy of Saul going penny 30% of the time, Joe going penny 75% of the time, Saul's still going to come out behind. Saul's going to lose 1.6 cents per game. That's even worse than the game which was hedged completely against him. This is probably not the best strategy because Saul would expect to lose 1.6 cents per game. I want to look, though, before we get away from this, I want to look at a slightly better way to get at this answer. Instead of making this big table and adding up the expected value, what we can do with the strategies that we've already found is to multiply matrices to find the long term results. What we will do is we will take the row strategy times the gain times the column strategy. And this will, in effect, do the same thing we just did up above with all the tables. So the row strategy we said for Saul, Saul decided to play the penny 0.3 and the nickel 0.7. The game was 1, negative 1, negative 5, 5. And the column strategy, Joe's strategy, was to play 0 0.75, 0 0.25. We can do this on our calculator really quickly. All right, so let's put this into our calculator. We'll hit second matrix. And we'll go over to edit. That first matrix has one row, two columns. Its entries are 0 0.3, 0 0.7, we'll second matrix. Go over to edit. The second matrix is two rows and two columns. Entries are 1, negative 1, negative 5, and 5. And we'll go second matrix. Whoops, second matrix. Go over to edit. And the third matrix is two rows and one column. And it is 0 0.75, 0 0.25. And we'll hit second quit. Once we've got all three matrices programmed in, we just have to multiply them together. Matrix 1, or A times matrix B, times matrix C. And when we hit Enter, it gives us negative 1.6. That is the exact same value that we found when we did it with the table. Although you could imagine if this game was larger and more complicated, especially this is much easier to do. And so that's what we're going to be doing is we're going to multiply matrices together to find the long term result. We'll multiply the row times the game times the column. Now, this brings up an interesting question, though. Just because we have an easy way to calculate the payoff, right now, Saul, you remember, is still losing. We want to try and level the playing field a bit and find a better strategy for Saul. Right now, with Saul's 30%, 70%, and Joe's 75%, 25% is not very advantageous to Saul. So what we're going to attempt to do next is do better. We are going to find the optimal strategy. So here's how we are going to find the optimal strategy. We want to have an equal payoff 
regardless of which move is made. And so how we're going to do that is we are going to take the row strategy, I should say, actually, to find the optimal strategy for the row player. His row strategy is going to be some number in the first spot and then 1 minus that number in the second spot because it has to add up to 1. These are our percentages for the first choice, percentages for the second choice. Times the gain. When we do that, we can set the entries of the result equal to each other. What this is, in a sense, doing is trying to find an equal balance between the payoffs in the game to be most advantageous to the row player. And very similar, if we want the optimal strategy for the column player, we take the game times this generic column strategy of C1 minus C. And then when we do that, we set the entries of the result equal to each other. So let's take a look at how this works with Saul and Joe trying to find their optimal strategy. First, let's look at Saul. So Saul's generic row strategy is the row in 1 minus r. And we're going to multiply that by the game. And remember, the game was 1, negative 1, negative 5, 5. Can't use a calculator for this. We just need to actually multiply them together, a row times a column. So we got 1r minus 5 times the 1 minus r. It's the first entry. In the second column, we've got negative 1r plus 5 times the 1 minus r. And the way we are going to find out what r equals is we are going to set these two entries equal to each other and solve for r. Distributing through the parentheses, we've got r minus 5 plus 5r equals negative r plus 5 minus 5r. Combining like terms, we've got 6r minus 5 equals negative 6r plus 5. Getting the r's on the same side, we'll add 6r to both. We'll add 5 to both sides. And we have 12r equals 10. Divide both sides by 12, and r equals 5 sixth. So our strategy then, the op optimal strategy for Saul is to pick the first option 5 sixths of the time. The second option the rest of the time, which would be 1 sixth. Notice 5 plus 1 adds to 6 sixth. That is Saul's optimal strategy. Well, let's do the same thing for Joe. Joe is the column player, so we multiply the game 1, negative 1, negative 5, 5 times the column C1 minus C to find his optimal strategy. Can't do this on the calculator, so again, we have to do it row times a column. So we have 1c minus 1 times 1 minus c, and negative 5c plus 5 times 1 minus c. To solve, we set these two entries equal to each other. So first, we'll distribute through. So now we have c minus 1 plus c equals negative 5c plus 5 minus 5c. Combine like terms, we have 2c 
minus 1 equals negative 10c plus 5. Get the c's on one side by adding 10c. Move the number over by adding 1 to both sides. Gives us 12c equals 6. Divide both sides by 12. And c equals 1 half. So this means the column strategy that is best is to choose c, that first option, 1 half of the time, and the second option the rest of the time, which is also 1 half. So Joe's strategy really is a 50-50 split between nickel and penny. So how do we find the value of the game then? To see who's going to come out ahead if they both pick the optimal strategy. We take the row times the game times the column. 5 6 times 1 6 times the game of 1, negative 1, negative 5, 5 times the column strategy of 1 half, 1 half. And this is where our calculator is going to come in. We'll go second matrix. We'll edit. The row strategy is still a 1 by 2 strategy, but this time it's 5 sixth for the first entry and 1 sixth for the second entry. Second matrix. We'll go over to edit. The 2 by 2 matrix, that's the same game that we just had before, so we don't have to type edit again. Second matrix. Go over to edit. The column strategy, still a 2 by 1, but this time it's 1 half. Oops, get the 1 in there. 1 half, 1 half, or 0.5 for both. Second quit. And we can, do, we can type in ABC again. Since we've got ABC right above us, we could just hit Enter. And when we do, that'll type in the previous entry again. A times B times C, it's just a different ABC. But you notice the answer is 0. The value of this game is 0. And what that means is, in the long run, if they both pick the optimal strategy, this is a fair game. They will both have the same chance to win the same amount of money if Saul picks Penny 5 6 of the time and Nickel 1 6 of the time. And if Joe picks 1 half of Nickels and 1 half Pennies, Joe will also balance out that fair game. They both have an equal chance at winning in this game. So in essence, whoever deviates from the st optimal strategy will be the loser in this game. So that's kind of how we find the optimal strategy for these non-strictly determined games. We find the row player with r1 minus r. We find the column player with c1 minus c. Let's do one more example to make sure we are really getting this process down before we head out to the homework assignment. So we are going to find the optimal strategy and the value for the game negative 1, 0, 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. Now, with every game, I first check to see if it's strictly determined. Because if it's strictly determined, we're done and it's easy. So the row player, we star the smallest entry. For the column player, we box the largest entry in each column. And you notice those do not overlap. So this one does not work. For a pure strategy, we're going to need some type of mixed strategy. So we take the row player as r1 minus r, and we multiply it by the game, negative 1, 0, 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. And that's going to equal negative r plus 1 fourth times 1 minus r for the first entry. For the second entry, 0r, that's kind of nice, and negative 1 fourth times 1 minus r. And so to find the optimal strategy, we set those 
equal to each other, so the payoffs are in the best balance. So we have negative r plus distributing 1 fourth minus 1 fourth r. That's a terrible 4. There we go. Equals distributing the negative 1 fourth through, we get negative 1 fourth plus 1 fourth r. And I'm going to get rid of the fractions. You don't have to do this step, but I am going to get rid of the fractions by multiplying each term by 4. That's going to give me negative 4r plus 1 minus r equals negative 1 plus r after we reduce out the force. Makes it easier to combine like terms. We got negative 5r plus 1 equals negative 1 plus r. Get the r's on one side by adding 5r to both, adding 1 to both. And we have 2 equals 6r. Divide both sides by 6. And r equals 1 third. So the row strategy is to do the first option 1 third of the time, the second option 2 thirds of the time. That is the optimal row strategy. To find the optimal column strategy, we multiply the game negative 1, 0, 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth by the column generic strategy of c, 1 minus c. And when we do that, we get negative c plus 0 times 1 minus c. That's nice. And 1 fourth c minus 1 fourth times 1 minus c. We set those two equal in order to solve for the column strategy. Distributing through the parentheses, this is going to give us negative c equals 1 fourth c minus 1 fourth times 1 minus c. Oops, I'm distributing. Forgot to distribute. Minus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth c. Again, I'll multiply everything by 4 to get rid of the denominators. That's going to give me negative 4c equals c minus 1 plus c. Combine like terms. Gives us negative 4c equals 2c minus 1. Move the c's to one side. I'll add 4c. Move the number to the other side by adding 1. We get 1 equals 6c. Divide both sides by 6. And C, the column player should pick the first option 1 sixth of the time. The other option then, 5 sixth of the time. And this is our column player's strategy. So then to find the value of the game, we're going to multiply the row player, 1 third, 2 thirds, times the game, which was negative 1, 0, 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth, times the column player, strategy of 1 sixth, 5 sixth. We can do that on the calculator. Second matrix, over to edit. The first matrix is still a 1 by 2. This time it's 1 third, 2 thirds. Second matrix. Over to edit. The game matrix is still a 2 by 2 matrix. Negative 1, 0, 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. The second matrix. Edit the third matrix, 2 by 1. This one is 1 sixth and 5 sixth. Second quit. We still have ABC up there as our entry. So if I hit Enter again, it will type ABC in again. And this time we get negative 1.666666. 
or if we want to do it as a fraction, negative 1 sixth is the value of this game. So it's going to be a loss for the row player if everybody plays optimal strategy. So that's what we're looking at today, these non-strictly determined games. They're always going to be 2 by 2 matrices. It gets a little more involved when they get bigger than 2 by 2. That's what we'll take a look at tomorrow. But for today, take a look at finding some optimal strategies and values. And we will see you in class tomorrow.